Okay. 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 Um, so you guys can um download the week eight in class key for this. Um and uh so we have the data, it's the same data set, right? Um uh so we have country, uh country code. Uh, indicator name, GDP or whatever, indicator code, um, and then years, and then the values for those. Um, so let's get into the questions. So the questions are here in this on this sheet. Uh, so describe the data. So number of observations, uh, number of rows, number of columns, and the unit of analysis. So uh, if you go to questions here, you will find the answers uh, to this. So I'll just go over them. So if you want to do a number of rows in the data. I will review the, the data set. Sorry, just what? give them a sense about what data set is about. Oh, okay. All the right, right. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, yeah, so if I do the review, so basically um, it has uh, countries and they are uh, there are three different indicators uh, which are being tracked for these for these countries. Uh, one is the GDP, uh, and if you scroll down, the other is life expectancy at birth, and finally the poverty headcount ratio uh, at national poverty line. So what percentage of uh, population is uh, below the poverty line, right? So these are the two, three variables, and the data is being tracked from uh, 2012 till 2021 for these three variables and for uh, how many countries are there? I think it's a, it includes all the countries in the UN system, right? So yeah, it goes, yeah, it goes, I think there are 214 countries, right? Um, so this is the data, right? Um, and so we want to find out, okay, how many rows do we have in this data set? So for that, you can just use the rows formula. I mean, you can manually calculate them also, like, you know, go to the data set and, um, you know, um, do go from here till the last row, or you can use the formula. So rows and so you can do is equal to rows and you can give it this uh, entire, all the rows that are there. So, so there are, uh, sorry, uh, you don't give the header. So six, uh, so A2, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, A2, two, six. so 642 rows. And then same for columns, you can do the same thing. So columns, uh, You can pick the first column and uh, scroll all the way to the last column, A1 to N1. And so there are 14 columns. And then the unit of uh, measurement or unit of analysis, because we have three indicators which are which we are doing our analysis. Uh, so, sorry, so. Um, yeah, so unit of analysis, um, in this case, uh, we have, uh, we have the USD uh, percentage, current USD percentage, uh, current USD value, which is the GDP value, which is the unit of analysis. Uh, the other is the percentage of population uh, of below poverty line. So that's the unit of analysis. And then for life expectancy, it's the years, right? So we are basically tracking for three variables. So we are doing the unit of analysis on those three variables, right? Uh, because Basically, what you look at for unit of analysis is that these values, what are the units for these, right? So for GDP, the unit is uh, current USD value, which is basically uh, how you calculate GDP. And then for life expectancy, you have the number of years. And then for uh, population below poverty line, it's the percentage of population. Okay, so are there any missing values? How many indicate the result as a single number and as a percentage of total number? So for that, what you can do is you can uh, do a uh, count blank. 
uh, in the data set. If you count blank, it's going to find all the values where there are all the all the all the cells where there are no values. Uh, but the important thing here is that you only want to uh, calculate the blanks in the in the values that matter, right? So if you go to this data, these are all the uh, these are all the values which are like kind of like filler values, right? You you will always have a value for the country, the indicator name, the indicator code. They'll be there. So the values that you're most concerned with are these uh, the values for like each year that exact value. So you're just going to find the blanks in these values, right? So what you can do is uh, you do count blank, and you give it the uh, range from here all the way down yeah so you go all the way yeah so you go all the way down here so basically e2 to n643 and so there are all uh, 2106 cells which have no values in them. So they are blank, right? And you want to give it as a percentage of all the values. Uh, so you're going to do a count of all the cells which have some values, right? So you can give it the same range and just in this case, just do count because now you're not counting blank, you're counting if there's any value there, right? So if you do the count for the same range, it's going to give you 4314. So your total is what? Your total is blank plus the miss, uh, blank plus the value. So missing values plus values which are there, right? So your total values are uh, the sum of these two values. Uh, so that would be uh, 6420. Right, because with count it is only counting values which are present, and with blank it is counting only values which there are no values. Right, so your total values are total values are six four two zero, and you want to give the percentage of missing values. So so two one zero six the missing values divided by the total possible values which can be which is six four two zero. So thirty two point eight zero percent thirty two point eight percent of values are missing. Right, does everyone get it? Okay, good. Um, so which of the following options would you consider to fix the problem? Impute missing values or drop observations? What are your thoughts about that? So if we have some missing values in our data set, uh, when would you choose to impute and when would you choose to drop? Go look at the key. And th does everyone know what impute imputation mean? Okay, so when you have missing values, imputation basically means, so let's say, mm, let me show you. So let's say you have uh, average life expectancy for US, right? And you have uh, values for like 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016, and 2017, right? And assume that in 2013, the life expectancy was 70. In 2014, it was 71. You have a missing value for 2015. And you have 73 was 2016, 74. This is very data where you want to come around there. Right? So imputation is basically sort of predicting this value based on other values. Uh, it could be based on the average of values, there are different ways to impute it. You can do, you can even run a regression for it. But basically, imputation is predicting these val this value based on some other values. So in this case, you can probably say that every year is changing by one year. So most probably 72 is, you know, it's a guess. Obviously, it's an not exact value, but you just guess it. And that happens a lot, you know, like in US Census Bureau, they will impute a lot of values. Uh, you know, like let's say if they had, if they if they want to find out a uh, number of people living in a neighborhood that you live, right? I am where you live, but like you know, you have maybe hundred houses, right? Uh, and the U.S. Census people go and knock on the houses, 
and they get answers from like 95 houses, right? And 95 houses, and they say that, okay, each house has like around you know, three to four people in it. So the five houses, people are not there. They could not get in contact with that. And there was no way to find out their day one, right? So once the final latest process, they're going to impute those five happens because they want to say, okay, the neighborhood looks like this. Average, you know, three, four people live here. The racial demographics are there. So most probably it would look like this. There are always chances for error, but a lot of times you might have to do imputation. So this is imputation. So considering that now you know what imputation is, which is basically filling in the miss, missing values through some uh, statistical or mathematical technique. When would you impute and when would you drop missing values? Yeah. Uh, you impute if there's like not that many missing. Mm -hmm. And it's relatively easy. There's like a lot of data so you can pretty much easily fill it in. Mm -hmm. But if there's a ton of values missing, then you should probably drop it. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, in our data, let's say uh, we have uh, for uh, we have this GDP value for Afghanistan, right? Uh, and we have this value. They they we have their values from twenty uh, twelve to twenty twenty, but twenty twenty one is missing. That's when you know, like the. A one Taliban took over. So maybe there's no data available there. We they weren't able to report. You have nine values, right? So maybe you can predict the tenth value. You can maybe run a regression, or maybe you can say, okay, what does the pattern look like? By how much? What is the average growth rate over the time? And then you can say, okay, 2021 would somewhat look like this. Again, it could be a, it could be your value could be wrong because you know some and in this case something big happened in Afghanistan. Maybe the GDP went down a lot, but uh, and so those kind of educated decisions you have to make, right? In this case, if you're going to say, okay, I cannot impute Afghanistan value because you know something big happened in the country and what if like you know this GDP cut was cut into half, so you can say I'm not going to impute there. Or or in other case, you're going to say, okay. Uh, maybe if it it is another country, like let's say this country here, what's that country? El Aruba, right? I don't even know where, where it is. Uh, but you're missing a value for 2010, 2021. So you can say, you know, I'm pretty sure nothing had nothing so significant happened in Aruba. It was just, you know, they missed the value. So I can impute it, right? On the other hand, if you go down to, I think the Poverty, that's where a lot of values are missing. Yeah. So you see here poverty. Now you have these countries where you only have like one value for poverty, which is like Angola. And it is only for this year uh, 2020, 2019, right? Uh, maybe they just reported after every 10 years. I don't know what happened. Now, in this case, you're not be able to impute, right? You just have one value. You're not be able to impute. You can't say, okay. Uh, I can make a sequence on my own that every year poverty increased by one person or you can't do that. Right. Uh, so, so that is where you have to be careful. Right. So in some cases, uh, you know, like there's no rule of thumb, but like your GDP people will look at a column and they'll say, okay, if you know, like more than 20 to 30 percent values are missing, it's most probably a contender to drop those column or, you know, and if there's less than that, then maybe we can think about imputation, right? So, um, so that was question. Uh, so is there any redundant information? If not, explain why the information is not. So if looking at the data, is there any redundant information? What? Uh, what, what do you mean by GDP? Like what's redundant? Indicated name or the indicator code? Either one of them could be redundant because it's like that it's pointing to two variables. Similarly, country is redundant, right? I mean, like in this analysis, it doesn't matter if you just have the code or the name, right? As long as you know what country it is. So both of these are redundant, right? So you can drop one of these columns for each, right? So you can either drop the indicator name or the indicator code, uh, or you can, and similarly for country name, 
uh, you can keep the country code or the country. Um, okay, so why is the data not tidy? Why is it not tidy? Yes. Also redundant. Yes, exactly. So you have redundant data and you have uh, observations as variable, right? Uh, so, and, and so it's, it's in long form um, and you want it to, sorry, it's in wide form. So you want it to find it in long form, right? Um, and and what 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 do you mean by like as observations as variables is these years right? They should be in our observation. They should be in the rows, right? Um, instead of you know like, but they they should be like one just one variable for these uh, year, right? And they should be like each separate value should be an observation. Okay, uh, so go to sheet uh, tidy practice. There is a table with fake observations for Afghanistan. So if you go to the tidy practice, um, I would suggest that you also download the just the question uh, sheet for this because the tidy practice in this is filled uh, because I want you to practice or so download that because that would be empty and then you can I'll, I'll, I'll or maybe you can work on this, but I'll show you what basically what we're doing. So basically what we're doing is we, we're having this dummy data, right? This is this is not data coming from the last sheet. This is just dummy data for these three countries and for the three variables. And it's in the same format as your uh, original data, right? Uh, like dummy data in the sense this these values are dummy, right? So for GDP, Afghanistan, Albania from 2012 to 2021, 20, there are some values. And then there are some values for life expectancy and a poverty headcount. So basically what we want is, we want you to convert this into uh, tidy data. So if you go to the question sheet, only these two are given, right? Uh, so basically what you want to do is you want to fill in these uh, three values. So how can you do that? What, what Excel function can you use for this? Uh, sorry, what? The pivot table you can, but I think it's it'll be too complicated because your data is not already in tidy format. So pivot table won't be able to handle it. VLOOKUP, yes. So uh, the way you use VLOOKUP is, um, so if you see the formula here, um, So what we are going to do is, um, we are going to check for if the value in the, um, if the value in a, if the value is missing or not, because we're not simply using VLOOKUP. We can, if you use simply VLOOKUP, it's going to give you the value that is present in the cell. But when you're doing tidy data, you want to put some value for the missing values also. Because whenever you're doing analysis, uh, you can't leave missing values just like blank. You, you want to fill in something there. So in this case, what you're filling in, in missing values is just a, a dot. All right. So to do that, we are going to put conditions, right? So we are going to start with an if condition. And we are going to say if... so. Here's how we're going to build. So first we're going to say if. So if takes three inputs, the logical test, if it is true, what to do, and if it is false, what to do, right? So your logical test is that is there a number and this in the cell, right? So for that, you put is number. So now you need to give some inputs for is number also. So is number takes one input and for that, now you want to check if, if is number in that, in that cell, right? You want to check if there's a number in that cell. So how will you check that? You will do a VLOOKUP in that cell itself, right? So, uh, for this, you want to do the VLOOKUP, um, uh, 
So you're going to do the VLOOKUP and you're going to match country name. Uh, so that is your country name match. And you're going to give it the table array. Uh, so all the table from here till the end, all the values. And you're going to say, uh, because this is GDP, so I'm going to pick from column number E. Um, and yeah, so column, uh, I'm going to pick from uh, E. Sorry, you, you're not going to give it all the uh, all the tables. You're just going to give it from uh, these um, these G only the GDP values because you're this here. You're only picking GDP values, right? Uh, it's, sorry, it's, sorry. So you're only giving going to give it the uh, these GDP values because now right now you're only searching for GDP. Um, and oh my god. Right, and you're going to pick the value from the, uh, sorry, this should be A2. So you, uh, you're you going to pick the value for 2012. So that is the fifth column, one, two, three, four, five. So you're going to pick the value from fifth column and you, um, and you want to do an, a, a true match. Now this is just for the is number, right? So this is just, yeah. remember like you, you need to be very careful of what you're filling in, right? So this is just checking for is number, if it is a number, right? If it is a number, then it's true. And if it isn't a number, then it's false, right? So the, the, the return of this is number is basically being fed into if also because if it's checking for the first, if it's checking for the condition, right? So if it is a number, if it is true, do what? So this is just checking for condition, right? So now if it is true, if there is a number, then pick the value of that number. So you do again VLOOKUP because you're basically now, first you use the VLOOKUP to check the condition. Now you say, okay, if there is a number, what do you want to do? You want to pull that number, right? So you do you do the same VLOOKUP again, and you can you can literally copy paste this because you're just now saying that if it is true, then you're just picking all those values of uh, all that that value from VLOOKUP, and if it is false, then just put a dot. So it's going to pick up the value here um, and you can uh, drag it down for the uh, till the Albania because right now you're only doing it for GDP, right? Uh, uh, wait. Why did it just... Oh no, you cannot drag it uh, down because uh, your uh gdp for it is you should be able to make it oh you want to keep these uh this range constant so a2 and for because otherwise if you drag it down it's also going to change this range so now if you drag it down for 2012 it's going to get you and so you can do the same thing for life expectancy so you we want you to use vlookup to fill this and you only want to do it for a short sample so you know how to do it and then it provides the time data set the whole time data set um and so whenever there is a number and you have this uh uh you have this suspicion that you know some values are missing you might you might just want not want to use just the vlookup because if you just use vlookup it's going to pull this value 295 but 
wherever there is a missing value is going to keep it blank and in tidy data you might not want that you might want to fill in some values uh there so like you know maybe you can fill in any missing or some code like minus 999 or you know like how uh in american community service does uh so you know you decide what you want to put so in this case i'm putting a dot you can decide what you want to put so you have that and then so 1g you go to the uh, tidy full now so you look at this tidy full and so this is made for you guys already um so if you go to the code book uh we want to do a code i think it would be uh so in 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 the key it's fill but i would suggest you know go and do look at the question and uh, not look at the key and do but i'm i'm going to do it with you guys here uh but i would suggest you know like trying to do it on your own uh so without looking at the key first so we you have the variable and the description <clears throat> and type of variable and unit of measurement uh so so we have uh the country so country as you know is like a category there's no uh, there's no you know like order to it it's just a category so it would be uh it would be a nominal variable uh a year is um, an interval because it is changing by a fixed interval right so you have a 1919 1920 1921 so it's an interval interval variable and the unit of measurement is like the calendar year or just the uh, one year gdp gross domestic product uh, it is continuous variable. Uh, it could also be, uh, as the professor mentioned, like the uh, ratio. Uh, and the unit of measurement is the current USD dollar. Uh, life expectancy is also, you know, continuous and ratio. You can have uh, a lot of different values. Uh, and it is continuous. You can have decimal values. And poverty rate similarly is also continuous or ratio. Uh, uh, and the unit of measurement is the percentage of people uh, below that. And for life expectancy, the unit of measurement is years. So uh, it's important like, so for the year, the variable year itself was an interval, right? But for life expectancy, even though the unit of measurement is year, it's not an interval because there your values can be decimal, there could be ratio, there could be fractions, right? And what else do we have? Okay. Uh, we're doing question number two also, right? Professor? Yeah, okay. So question number two, uh, you, now you're going to do the exploratory analysis on the tidy data. So calculate summary statistics, minimum, maximum, average, standard deviation, and count by the country for last 10 years. Uh, so once you have this tidy data, you want to create this summary table, uh, again, is anyone still not clear on how to create summary tables? Let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll literally go over it, but if no one has any confusion, I'm assuming that you know by now how to create summary tables. Good. Right. Uh, so basically you just, uh, we want the minimum, maximum, average, standard deviation of GDP and count, minimum, maximum, average, and standard deviation um, of life expectancy, and similarly for poverty. And you'll see a lot of these values are missing because there could be some missing values or there's no value populated there. It's a lot of values are missing. So that's why it could be, uh, that's why some of these values might be missing. Uh, okay, so once you have this summary table um, in this form, um, so we build that. So what is the country with the smallest average GDP, uh, smallest uh, percentage poverty, and life expectancy? So we want to find three countries because uh, each country for the smallest variable, right? So once you go to the summary, uh, it makes it very easy to uh, do this sort of analysis on a summary table. So if you click here on this 
uh, row labels uh, the country column and you say i want to sort and if you go to most more sort options you can tell it which column to sort by so we want to find the average smallest average gdp so i'm going to say average of gdp and ascending because you want the smallest at the top so if you go here um uh, average of gdp so kiribati has the smallest average of gdp uh, this country right uh similarly you can say i want now to sort by life expectancy average of life expectancy so you do that and you go here and you say central african republic has the lowest average life expectancy uh of 51 years and similarly you do the poverty um and you come here and you do average of poverty and ukraine has the lowest average poverty and it's at 1.1 percent um now also like uh sometimes uh you also might have to be careful because maybe ukraine is missing like some values or there might be like some wrong values you know so you have to be careful of that also uh but if you look at the data and if it looks fine then you know uh you're like okay because if you see here like all the countries like the, even the minimum countries like have 4.61 and then ukraine has 1.1 so this is also like you know thinking about like this is not part of what we're doing but like you know this is a good statistical example that you can think okay maybe something is happening here right you know uh it has a very low poverty rate so what's happening here so you can do more exploration on this right so this sort of uh analysis is useful with these summary statistics uh, okay um so round the average life expectancy to zero decimals and build a frequency table for life expectancy in years so if you you can literally just put the life expectancy from here and like paste it into another uh sheet so you, we have the sheet 2c here it's already uh pasted here um uh, but i can paste it again wait so you can copy paste the values from here and then paste as values here so you have these all these decimals with life expectancy so it's saying round it up so how you round it is basically you use the round formula so you do round and and you give the value which needs to be rounded and you give the number of decimals you want to be rounded it to so you in this case it's zero so you want to round it to zero and then you can just drag and drop the formula uh so once you have that now you want to do a frequency table so you can um easily do that by uh, a, a pivot table so you can select this for select this uh data and you can insert a pivot table from this table range and you can put a pivot table in this existing sheet and you can say i want to put this pivot table here like in l and the way and and what you just need to do is you want to take the average life expectancy as rows so it's going to give you all distinct values and then you can just do the count the values go to values and instead of sum set count value field setting as counts so this is going to give you the uh frequency table and you can sort it by uh descending order also so you can say okay more sort options and i want to do descending by count so most countries have uh average life expected so mode of distribution is what the most frequently occurring value right so in this case 76 years because there are 17 countries with those values so that is your mode of distribution and what is the percentile for the life expectancy for the usa chile and china 
So if you um, go here, so for this, you might uh, need to use a different formula. So if you go to the questions here, um, so the way you do is, is uh, that you give, you use the formula percent rank dot inc. Uh, so this is a, this is a formula, a function in Excel that you can use to find uh, the percentile for any uh, value, right? So what you're going to give it is, so you're going to use this formula percent rank. So it's going to uh, take uh, two inputs. First is um, all the values in which you want to find this uh, percentage in, uh, the percentile in, and then the exact value that you want to find the person percentile of, right? So the right. yeah, so percent. Yeah, percentile. Okay. So you want to give it the array. So basically you can use all these values of life expectancy that you have here. So you can give it because these are all the values of life expectancy that you have, right? Uh, Okay, yeah, so percentile, sorry. So percentile link, and then you go here and you can give, oh my God. So you can give all these values. Um, and then the second value is basically you want to give it the US value. So if you go to the US value, you will need to get it from the summary table. So if you go to summary and find US value, um, so you can give the US value and average life expectancy. So average life expectancy in this in the I column and US is here. Right. So you you give it the US value. Oh, sorry. It was person time, not person time. Yeah. So it's going to give you, yeah, so you can convert in this percentage and you can repeat the same for Chile and China. So basically you have to give the, all the range of values uh, that you want to find the percentile in and give the exact value of it. You want to find the person. And then, um, so to D, uh, round the average poverty to zero decimals and create a histogram for the distribution. Um, so uh, I'm going to change this to not zero decimals because uh, once I was doing the key, you, you don't require zero decimals for this. 
uh, for the poverty rate. So even if you don't do it, uh, it's going to be all right. Uh, so if you go to this 2D table, uh, you can uh, literally just copy paste uh, copy paste these values of average poverty from um, You can take all these uh, average values and paste it and um, you can remove these, uh, the one which are, you know, divided by zero. So it's, it's, it is here, uh, the average poverty for all the countries. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be all the 199 values because there are a lot of missing values uh, that those are the ones divided by, divisible by zero, the, the error ones. Um, so... And then you can create bins. So uh, you create bins by uh, saying, okay, I want bins of five years, uh, constant five years. Um, and so it's already saying, you know, use a bin of 5% interval and consider a range from zero to 90%. So your bin is, uh, so this, uh, your first bin, if you, you put a value of five, it means zero to 5%. Then five to ten percent, ten to fifteen percent, fifteen to twenty percent. So these are your bins, right? And these are all the average poverty values which are available. Now you want to create a histogram. So if you uh, open this uh, tool pack, there is a way to do that. So once you have these two tables, uh, two columns, the bin and average poverty, you can go here and you can select on histogram. And your input range will be the values for average poverty. So you're going to pick all the values for average poverty here. And your bin values will be all the bin values that you have here till 85. And output, I want it here maybe on I. And I want the chart output. So if you once click, you once click OK, it's going to build this for you. Um, it's going to build the histogram and it's going to give you the frequency table. So, and from here you can answer these questions. So what is the mode of the distribution? So the mode of the distribution is one which is like occurring the most. So this range, so 20 to 25%, basically uh, this, uh, because once you say 25, that bin means 20 to 25, the, this gives the upper value of that bin. So uh, most values fall under this bin of 25, where maximum value is 25 and it starts from 20, 20.1, 20 you can say. So this is the mode of the distribution. Uh, so looking at this histogram, is the dim what, what kind of distribution is this? Um, yeah, and... Uh, what would uh, would be the mean higher or the median? Anyone else? Do you agree or disagree? Yes. The mean, the mean would be higher. Why? Yeah, why, why would the mean be higher? Um, yes. So right skewed mean is higher than median because you have more values on the right side, uh, which will pull the mean to the right because like median are like from the count of values, right? Uh, but mean is like absolute magnitude of the values. So there are on the right side, the values are increasing. So it would be more right skewed. On the left skewed is the other way around. 
so that is question these are the first two questions so i'm just covering these uh and we'll see when we cover question number three and four but yeah i, I yeah i don't think we have time uh to have a question are the is this going to be due this week no or is this no. just for our practice this is just for practice okay.